Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Everybody is doing great, doing fine. I'm doing okay. I'm still feeling kind of under the weather. I've been having some issues with insomnia, which I suffer from quite frequently. Um, and just trying to figure out whether it's just regular old insomnia or has my um, my th thyroid that I kind of goes back and forth from normal to abnormal as it kicked up again. But we're going to see if it's just insomnia right now. I'm going to try some uh, tart cherry juice my mom was just selling it to me. Um, but today I'm coming um, at you. Uh, going to talk a little bit um, about um, is there feminine mystique and uh, feminine mystique was a book written by Betty Friedan if I can if I remember correctly um, back in the 60s and about it started the, the kind of the feminist movement and stuff and I'm not anti-feminist movement I'm not rah-rah feminist movement either I'm just kind of me, you know, and stuff. I, I, as you know, I, I don't like to join clubs because there are too many restrictions on, on being something or calling yourself something or all this sort of stuff, you know, so there are stuff that I don't really, you know, get into. There are things that I, I definitely will be, you know, and stuff. As I am a Christian, um, you know, that's part of a group I'm a part of and stuff, but um, even that group sometimes I can be, you know, I can be kind of do my own thing with. Um, before I do this, though, I want to uh, give a hint to someone. Squirrel Girl, hi, 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 hi. I just wanted to let her know um, how to do what I did yesterday with my lipstick. And uh, and she was just saying how much she loved that lipstick and stuff. And do you know that was hot pink lipstick that I did that with? Um, it's called, uh, I call it a smoky lip instead of the smoky eyes it's kind of weird but it's a it's a thing and um my wonderful sister-in-law jen green uh showed me how to do it she's a makeup artist and stuff and she showed me how to do it and i i thank jen forever because you may have some lipstick that you don't really care for the color you don't you you know you buy lipstick and you think eh, i don't really like this color oh it didn't look quite the way it did in the tube and stuff but this is a good way to kind of make it a little bit smoky or darker where you will like it this is a uh, black lipstick it's just black and there's lots of this is my um my manic panic and stuff and there's lots of people who make and sell black lipstick i'm not really sure about white lipstick but just do the same thing kind of lighten it up but with black lipstick it, it really works well and what you do with the black lipstick i've got two tubes of this i'm so happy this is the one tube and i'm not even halfway done and stuff i've got two tubes of this so this is awesome i don't wear a black lipstick just black lipstick what you do is you take it and you put it in the corners of your lips all four corners kind of and not into the middle just just the corners just the corners and then you take your regular lipstick that you may not like the color or whatever or you like the color you just want to darken it up make it maybe um a little bit more smoky looking or or a little bit you know darker and whatever to experiment and you take it and you put it on full on your lips now it'll kind of the black and, and whatever color you have will kind of mix in together you rub your lips together you know kind of smooth them out to make sure the black kind of blends in with the other lipstick and then you get another color so yesterday my hot pink lipstick turned into this beautiful plum a uh, dark plum and stuff so I was loving that and then I've got some more lipstick back there that was kind of this really sienna brown that I thought would look good and it looked awful and then I put it on with the black lipstick and turned it into a nice chocolate brown and stuff which looked fabulous on me and stuff so that's my end on how, a high hint on how I do that with the lipstick um I think this manic panic is like I don't, I don't know I think it's like six or seven bucks um, you can get it. I, um, this was a gift. Um, you can get it at uh, at Amazon and a couple of other places, but it's called Manic Panic. But I'm sure everybody else has some, too. And you could just turn really awful, some awful cheap lipstick into some really fabulous lipstick, um, you know, uh, just doing that. And so I would try it and uh, see how you like it and everything and stuff. And, you know, that that's my makeup tip for today and probably the only one you'll ever get from me. Okay. But today we're going to talk about the feminine mystique. And I got this um, 
I got this email that you see down here uh, on this from not a really an email but this comment from a person who reads this blog I didn't say who it was and so but they commented last week about um, when I was talking about you know essentially men aren't women and when I was talking about the thing about all the issues of the gentleman who punched the lady on the bus and you know and, and what happens when you don't act like a woman when you decide to act like a man and it's really weird because the thing is um, is that we're getting this thing where women are more brusque and rude and um, they're more you know they're they're more aggressive um, and not in a good way like I say and uh, stuff and they're really they're be, they're becoming like men but unfortunately like I said they don't they don't take up all the the wonderful qualities of men. They take all the really bad qualities of men and stuff. And um, you know, and and men are deciding, hey, you're gonna act like a man. I'll try to treat you like one. Now there are some incidents that happened with some rapper from Def Jam. And like I say, I don't I don't share these uh, videos and stuff. You can go on the web and look for all that stuff. I don't share that kind of mess. I don't I don't do that sort of stuff. I don't let that sort of stuff into my spirit. Um, you know, bad enough, I saw the one with the lady getting popped on the bus in Cleveland, which was just like, wow, okay, and stuff, you know, and we're so, you know, either we we miss the big picture of what actually happens because either we're so righteously angry or we're so, you know, desensitized to carnage that we think it's funny and stuff, you know, and there are big things happening when things like this happen. There are big things happening with the rapper gentleman who just kind of beat a lady up from what I could tell for no reason. But I haven't seen it and I probably will never see it. Um, you know, and so but what's happening is and from this this thing is is that women are, are thinking that, well, you know, if I want to do the ladylike thing, I, I need to appear ladylike on the outside. And that's sort of good enough. And really, it's not good enough. You know, now, I like the way that I dress. You know, uh, I'm a woman. You can't mistake that. No matter, I could be wearing a, a, a pretty much a, a gunny sack. And you could tell I was a woman. Okay, and stuff. But the way that I dress is a reflection of me. I don't run around. And I know a lot of women who are, you know, well, you should wear skirts and high heels and all that stuff. Listen. I got really bad feet, okay, and um, they hurt in the high heels, so now I'm just wearing dance goes because my feet hurt, okay, you know, and I want to be comfortable, and dance goes are just like little clog shoes and stuff, you know, they aren't the most fabulous, cutest shoes ever, but man, they make your feet feel good, and stuff, you know, and because it's cold and rainy where I live, I'm not wearing a skirt all the time because it's wet, and some days I actually have to put on rain boots and all that sort of stuff because it's wet and rainy here and stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I just can't do. Now, if you live in a really nice climate, you can do some of that stuff and you can always look like you're straight off of, you know, leave it to beaver or whatever, which I always say too, people are, have decided to romanticize the past and forget there's a lot of things about the past for women that really sucked, you know. And um, so, you know, and, and we want to romanticize it as if it's just this wonderful, great time for women. Yeah, not really. Okay, and stuff, you know, and there are issues back then that, you know, women don't have to face today, you know, that, you know, make it, a, you know, a tad bit better for women. But we can't figure out how to get balance in this world. We're all off kilter. Either we're at one extreme or the other. Either we want to be sitting with our hands in our laps, you know, like this, or we want to be like, you know, almost Popeye the Sailor Man or something, you know kind of women. Nobody can get a balance and strike a balance. Now, right now, I'm wearing this sweater. I love cardigan sweaters. I don't like um, blazer jackets. I hate them. I got big shoulders. I look like a football player. And stuff. And a t-shirt and my scarf. And I got some blue jeans on under here and stuff, you know. And it's cold here. And it's not raining today, but it, but it was raining. And so if I would have went out, it would have been cold and raining. I was not going to go out in a skirt. But really, your ladylike doesn't really come from kind of even me putting on makeup, which is just something that I just kind of like to do. I don't do this every day, but I do this quite often. So now that my hair is cut short, 
I like that everybody can see my face and I can put on more makeup and I can put on some earrings and I can feel sexy. So yesterday when I did do the thing about, well, do you feel sexy? Well, yeah, I do feel sexy. I feel sexy in blue jeans and I feel sexy in shorts and I feel sexy in dresses. I feel sexy because of who I am here, not all this. Now, this is great. This works well with the sexiness, okay? But if I didn't feel sexy here, if I didn't have it here in my mind, then it would be, it wouldn't work. So this person talks about, you know, men piercing their ears and all this stuff. And in many cultures, men piercing their ears is not an unmasculine thing at all, you know, and stuff. And even in this one, it's not always an unmasculine thing. I don't really care about men pier piercing their ears. It's not a big deal. That's not something that I would be thinking, oh, my God, there's something, you know, wrong with you that just you know oh you must be gay that's that's just homophobia to me so you know that's not anything that I would ever participate in and then the thing about women having tattoos now that was a mistake because I have a tattoo and I've got one on my on this arm and you might have seen it it's a genie and stuff and I got that when I was in college love my genie have always loved my genie and plan on getting another one tattoos in my city are not just tattoos we're not doing stuff people aren't doing everything at the jailhouse you're not just doing something in somebody's garage they're art in this city they are a reflection of art Seattle has one of the biggest tattoo conferences you know and uh, exhibitions in the United States it is big and tattoos are not no just fly by night business people are make people are paying a lot to get people to give them a nice beautiful artistic tat i dated a guy who had a tat down his arm he paid like you know he paid like close to three thousand dollars for it and stuff so you know so tats aren't really a big thing it's not a big thing to me if women have tattoos and i know people, oh that's so unfeminine that's so that's not unfeminine this is unfeminine this is unfeminine you know i take a woman in some blue jeans and a t-shirt and some tennis shoes with some good manners any day over a woman all dressed up with really bad manners and one of the things women are missing is some kind of manners gentility you know i mean you don't have to be dressed up to be mannerable but you know as i said when no said when i'm talking about women fighting and cussing like sailors and all this stuff the woman that was in the video that got hit by the bus driver she wasn't exactly some masculine looking woman and actually she probably wouldn't have been messed with if it hadn't been for her mindset and her mouth that really just you know, really just told you all the un, un the um the unfemininity about her, you know, and stuff. And it's the it's the mindset that's keeping black women in this in this thing of people feeling as if it's okay to hit and abuse us and stuff because we're so tough. We're just tough girls and stuff. And we're so tough, we don't really know how to act gentle or feminine. We don't really, nobody's teaching us. We just know we're, we're supposed to hang out with the boys and, and we're supposed to be like guys and, and all this sort of stuff. And it's really just hurting us. While other women, while other women are getting excuses and passes and being treated like feminine, every time we do this stuff, we get treated like men and we're really hurting ourselves and this this um this comment here is just sort of a reflection of what we don't know about what it means to be feminine is that we think it's an outside thing and so i had some woman tell me well you know i don't think it's going to really matter how we dress and all this stuff no it's not going to matter how you dress it's really not you're not lying it's not going to matter how you dress it's going to matter what you think and how you conduct yourself. I don't really know what happened in the video with the rapper guy, but let me tell you. Here's just the truth of all truths. Black men don't really like black women, okay? That most of them just don't, you know? And giving giving him, giving black men an excuse to sock you one is just what they're waiting for, okay? You know? So, you... Wanting to and desiring and black women just dying trying to get black men's respect, which I don't really even know why 
it's worth anybody's time or effort, you know, and stuff. Why would you want respect from disrespectful man child, you know, a disrespectful man child, somebody that's like a little baby, you know, and stuff. Um, but our our clawing for respect, our trying to make them respect us, cussing them out and all that, all that's going to do is get you probably a bunch of black women beat up all around the place and nobody really caring. Okay, you know, I don't really care if black men respect me or not, especially some of these folks out on the street where I live. These folks aren't worth getting respect from. So what does it matter? I don't care whether they think I'm, you know, somebody worthy of respect or not. I don't fight with them. I don't argue with them. I don't engage them. I don't go there because. You respecting me as a person is not really a big deal to me. You'd have to be somebody respectable for me to desire your respect, you know. And all the stuff of women talking about, well, you know, we just wish they would do this. We wish they would do, you know, they're they're not going to do it. And so you, you kind of need to move on with your life, you know, and figure out how to do stuff for yourself. If you want to be feminine, go into your head. Go into your manners. Go into, you know, the way you speak and how you speak to people. That's where you get your feminine mystique. That's where you get all your femininity. All the rest of this stuff could go away. One day I could, you know, one day I could just be too tired to, to dress myself, you know, and stuff. Or one day I may be sick and may not be able to do that. I, I had a grandmother who was, um, great grandmother actually who was a very, very old woman. And when we'd see her, she was sick and she was always in bed, always in a nice, you know, gal, but she was always in bed. And um and she had long hair down to her almost almost to her butt. She was she was part Native American. And so she would sit there and she was just the most feminine woman I'd ever seen. She wasn't dressed up. She wasn't wearing makeup. She wasn't wearing jewelry. She was just sitting in a bed with her pajamas on. You know, and stuff. And so that's where I know you can get it. Women are thinking, well, you know, men won't protect us. That's not I've been protected before the story I told you about the guy jumping over the over the um the guy jumping over the bar here in Seattle. Um another story of a friend of mine we're in a bar and, and some guys tried to, you know, they tried to act crazy with us because one of them had taken my seat and I, you know, like Hey, dude, you've taken my seat. And he wanted to start something with me. And you got like five other guys out of nowhere. These guys, we just kind of knew random. We weren't dating these dudes. We just knew them. They were just friends. And so we were in our 20s out of nowhere. Jump in and like, hey, guy, you know, one guy was the owner of the bar. He's like, hey, dudes, you got to get out of here. They're kicking dudes out. Dudes are fussing and cussing at us. We don't really care because I got my chair back, you know, and stuff. So, but the thing is, is it wasn't like I was some dainty anything, you know? And women was like, well, you have to speak softly. Listen, I don't speak softly. This is my voice, you know? I'm not exactly super loud, but I've got kind of a heavy, big, kind of deep voice for a woman, you know, and stuff. But I like my voice. I think it's very sexy, you know, and stuff. And my husband likes it, so that's really what matters. I'm not going to speak in small tones just so I can somehow appear to be more feminine while I'm acting masculine, you know. I'm a tall woman. I'm 5'8". I'm a tall woman. I'm not a huge woman, but I'm not a small woman either. The protection comes and the treating you like you're feminine comes from your mindset and from the way you speak to people. The please, the thank you that we don't get, the excuse me, the, you know, I mean, the, the, just the, boy, I take some manners. I take some manners because they're so lacking in so many women. I've seen women as feminine as you want to make them, okay? As feminine as, as feminine as they are. And they are the roughest, toughest, cussing and hollering and acting crazy women you've ever seen in your life. And you think, oh, my God. You look like one thing, but when your mouth opens, it says you're another. Remember, then this is said right in the Bible. It doesn't matter about what's going in. It's what's coming out. The appearance doesn't matter. 
You know, it's what's coming out. What do you think in your own mind? Ladies, if you want to wear nice clothes and dresses and skirts and high heels, go right ahead. If that's what makes you comfortable, I say do that. If you're a woman and that's, you're not comfortable in those things, you'd rather wear pants or jeans, you go ahead and you do that. Okay? But remember, it starts here. It starts here. It starts in your attitude and in your mind. And that will flow out of your mouth. You are what you think. And so, and so if I'm thinking like a, a feminine woman, then that's what I will talk like. And so, and so it's important to know all those things. It's important to know all this stuff about where if you have a tad or if you wear pants or everything, that, that's surface crap. You know, I've, I've seen tatted women that are more feminine than any model on the runway. You know, I've seen drag queens more feminine than regular women. Really? You know, so <coughs> it's, it's, you know, it's, <coughs> it comes from your inside and stuff. And all this stuff about what appearance is, what the appearance of the guy is, what the appearance of the woman is, and all this stuff, you know, and all this stuff in between this other surface crap that we don't seem to be able to get over, to get to the meat of the situation, which is your attitude as a woman, you know, and stuff. It'll, it will never, you'll never be treated feminine unless you are talking as a feminine woman. You'll never be treated from the, the smile, the brightness of your face, the lightness of your attitude. You know, there's so many heavy, burdened down women, and they look they look heavily burdened down. You know, and stuff. And then people wonder, you know, and stuff. All this, and it's looking for respect in all the wrong places. Stop it, ladies. Just stop it. Just stop it. You know, worried about what so and so. Hey. Stop worrying about these folks, these rappers, these these basketball players, all these black men that, you know, hate you anyway, okay, you know, for the most part, okay? Stop worrying about these folks and whether they're going to be with you or whether they're going to like you or whether they're going to think you're worthy or something. They aren't worthy. They aren't worthy. And, you know, looking for that is going to get your feelings hurt. And in this day and age, it may get you soft. So, you know, it's something to think about. It's just something to think about. What is the feminine mystique? Where, where does it come from? It comes from here and being surrounded with people that give you something to be feminine and mannerable and nice and kind and compassionate for. That's where it comes from. It comes from in the heart. It comes from in the mind. It comes when you speak. That's where it comes from. And all the rest of this stuff about sitting in a corner and having your legs crossed, your hands across them, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, I don't plan on, on living my life uncomfortable, you know, in an uncomfortable position, you know, with a corset on or something like that. I, I don't want that. You know, let, let's be real about there are parts of the past that may be really great, but there are parts of the past that really aren't that great. Let's be real and stop romanticizing everything and know things for what they are. You know, see them in the real light and perspective. Because believe me, it was not all sunshine and roses. So, you know, but that's just what I was talking about today. And tomorrow, I will be doing a special edition of How's Married Life? Boundaries edition, and I had to do this because I was reading something last night that is going to burst open a myth that has been going on forever. I'm so excited to tell you ladies about this. I was so excited to read it and stuff, and I can't tell you, um, I can't wait to tell you tomorrow on the edition of How's Married Life 
the boundaries edition. Uh, so uh, that'll be my boundaries post for this week. But until then, I will talk to you all later. You know, ladies, keep it classy. Okay, and uh, so I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.